is. Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So this is uh, part three of the uh, Kingsbury Mitchell aerodynamic bearing build. Um, this is a collaboration project with Steve Mould. Uh, if you want to see his videos on uh, the subject of, of uh, weird stuff like this, uh, there's a link down in the description. You can check out his channel. Steve's a cool cat. Check him out. Um, this is part three. We're working on the actual tilting pads today. Um, tool steel, a little bit of CNC work. Um, anyway, interesting stuff, so check it out. And uh, Christmas is around the corner, just a heads up. Uh, I got some Ox Tool, Ox tool swag. Uh, we got uh, more Precision Tools uh, coffee cups and t shirts. So look at the banner right below the video, uh, the Teespring thing. And uh, if you're up for buying a t-shirt, uh, a more one or any other, they're right there. Go for it. If not, don't worry about it. Thank you very much. Here's the drawing of the, uh, the tilting pad. And uh, here's some completed ones here. Now, I did make a little design change partway through the project. Um, and uh, the video that I shot of uh, machining these shows a spherical seat in here, but I since changed that to a flat bottom pocket like you see here. And the reason is um, um, I went to a more captured design. I had a loose ball in here that this uh, um, tilting pad can, uh, can pivot on and seek its kind of uh, uh, relationship with the rotor, right? So I had a ball uh, that was sitting in a seat in a seat here. Uh, and I changed that to a spherical tipped uh, set screw that I can change the height on uh, pretty easily. And uh, anyway, it's, it's more captured and there's uh, less parts. So uh, anyway, subtle change there. And then uh, at some point we'll get to the, uh, the lapping of, the, uh, of the, uh, the tilting pads themselves. Oh, got a fingerprint in there. Um, so let's, uh, let's go to it. These are A2 tool steel. They're heat treated to 60-ish Rockwell and then lapped flat, uh, uh, pretty damn flat. So uh, let's go uh, do some machine work. All right, we're switching over to uh, some steel now. Uh, we did the aluminum part earlier. And uh, this is a A2 uh, tool steel. And this is the part that we're making here. This is uh, one of the tilting pads here. Um, and once again, we're using our little talon grips here, and you can see how little you need to hold on to actually, and, and actually drop the part, dopey, um, and clear the uh, and clear the gripper clamps there. So there'll be a second operation on this side here to take off that flange and then chamfer the uh, the opposite side. But uh, this is the bottom surface here. There's more work on the bottom surface. Uh, uh, initially, so let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, run a few of those. Uh, first operation uh, is just to take the top of the blank down um, so to Z zero. This is a uh, four flute uh, aluminum titanium nitride coated uh, uh, end mill. Um, I can't remember the maker on this particular end mill.
So this cuts the uh, spherical ball seat, uh, the pivot in this uh, the tilting shoe here. And it dwells per second. Zoop, done. Good. Okay, we're doing the second side now. We have some, um, you know, it's a little bit of a holding problem. There's a, no good way to, to kind of clamp this in a normal vice arrangement and pick up the center of the world there. Uh, there's no straight edges on it, so it's a little tricky. So one way you can do that is to cut a pocket at a known position, right, uh, that registers the part. And uh, so this, uh, we're gonna drop that in there. I'll uh, snug the vise a little bit and then give it a little, uh, little uh, tappy tap love here. Make sure it feels solid. And the vise is tight. Yeah, that's good. So this is just going to face off that uh, that flange that's on the back, okay? And then cut it off and bring it to uh, the finished thickness. And then we chamfer the edges, and it's all deburred and uh, kind of ready to go for heat treat and grind. Side now saves having to deburr that by hand because it does such a nice job. Kingsbury uh, parts that are getting heat treated. Get all my, my crud together. I got a fan going, fan going. They've been soaking at uh, the high temperature for over an hour now. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do the deed here. Take the, the little ones out first. So we're going to do the tempering in this. Uh, it's easier because I have to wait a long time for the uh, hot shot to come down to the tempering temperature. So I can, ideally, you you do your tempering right after the heat treat or as very soon uh, as possible afterwards. So we're just going to use this little oven here because it goes hot enough. We're going to go up to about 375 and um, uh, put our parts in and uh, in our little. Uh, Easy bake oven here, like so. It's already warming up. We don't bend anything. So we'll leave those in there and um, and come back and uh, see what happens. I mean, we won't notice any difference, but uh, um, anyway, it's an easy way to do the tempering. So, set a timer and see you later. So these are the uh, the tilting pads for the Kingsbury, and I'm just going to dust this. Uh, this is the working surface here. Um, I'm just going to dust these off in preparation for lapping. Um, you know, they got some little tool marks in them and whatnot uh, that it would take a while to lap out. So we'll just give them a quick grind and um, and then lap them. So what I'm doing here is I'm blocking them in. Um, because they're kind of smallish pieces. These are cast iron, 
uh, which is a real nice uh, on the cert on the uh, magnet. They, they release real well. And then I'm just gonna turn the magnet on, and then give them a little feel here. And then what I'll do is using my little copper thing here is I'll just tap these in just a little bit to make sure that they're in good contact. Okay. All right, so I think we're ready. All right, got a little touch there. And we'll put some cooling on. And I'm gonna go down just a little bit, and then I'll we'll take a a little pass across the. Uh, That first one uh, is a high one, huh? So this is a um, Radiac uh, 60 grit uh, VOS, very open structure. So it's nice for tool steel, grinds real cool. Um, and um, all, the, all the things you want. I got a pretty small step over right now. Getting pretty good on those. find these little tilting pads here and it, originally the design I had a spherical pocket and we're going to a flat bottom pocket which is uh, um, hopefully will help my uh, my little problem that I'm having with the uh, with the thing there so uh, this is like real hard milling here uh, these are uh, these pu uh, these pads are A2, I think I mentioned that before, A2 tool steel, and they've been hardened to over 60 Rockwell. Um, we're milling them with carbide, you know, which is considerably harder than that. <clears throat> but your technique has to, you know, accommodate the uh, the hard material there. So, so I got to stop here, and then I'm clamping it down. But that's what we're doing. Is that little uh, flat bottom uh, pocket there is what we're doing. So you, you take light cuts and uh, and cross your fingers, right? <laughs> so let's uh, let's do it. It's a squeaker too. MQL uh, lubricator, which uh, kind of minimum quantity uh, of stuff. The main thing that uh, I want with this is, is, is blowing the real fine chips out of the way. So it's zigzag ramping in, uh, and the depth of cut's about 15 thousandths of an inch. 
then it interpolates around and uh, for the circle. So. so there's the zigzag. As that little spherical pocket gets eaten away, it uh, it starts to squeak pretty good. Not bad right now.